The world is more complex than ever before, moving and changing at an incredible rate. No one is immune, not even the most successful leaders of today's best-known companies. We are taking the global industry to new assumptions, beyond agile and business agility. Be ready to understand the science behind high uncertainty and accelerated change. Be ready to challenge your organization. Join us at the Enterprise Agility World Conference to know more. The largest event on science, organizational change, and enterprise agility. Enterprise Agility World Conference. The place where science meets organizational change. Hello, hello everyone and welcome. I'm very happy to have you on board. I'm very happy to have you here. We are live from California, live here from the Enterprise Agility World Conference Studios. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you are one more day and you are uh, following these really, really interesting talks where we try to bring, you know, a, a, some, a, you know I, I always say that um, the Agile event uh, have been talking about plus minus the same topics. There are certain conferences in the world where you can effectively see that they, they are doing something interesting, but um, we want to go in that direction. And it's important for us that we move the industry in a completely direction. There is a lot of research. There is um, There are a lot of cool people around the world working on really good things, trying to take organization to the future of organization with play Market disruptions, where leaders are exposed to exponential change, exposed to us. For situations all the time, remember, leaders are also human beings. Sometimes people forget about this. And today we have a really, really interesting conversation. But before we go to this, and I introduce Xavier, I want to just to make sure that um, everyone is that the live streaming is good. It's going to take me like 30 seconds just to make sure that um, you can hear us properly, that you can see our videos, and just to make sure everything is ready today for the show. And today we're going to learn more about organizational change. We're going to try to move into a different direction of, um, you know, trying to understand the whole when we try to move organizations and we about uh, change in company, which is something um, extremely complex. And easy at the same time, something that is deceptive because obviously it looks easy, but it it, it involves a, a lot of different things. And I'm very very happy to confirm that the, the four of us we are live. So first of all, before um, going to um, introduce Xavier, I wanted to um, thank uh, here Marwin and Car Carvili and also Isamel Carvili that I asked them yesterday if they would be able to join me today for a super interesting conversation. I have so many expectations about this podcast and I hope something. So I think I talked for a while. So let me know. Thank you. Uh, where, where are you located? Uh, Nisam? I think just, just low. Marvin, but it's going to be it's going to be probably back soon. Where, where are you, Nisam? I am in uh, Paris right now. Oh, okay, okay. Well, 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 okay, that's that's cool. And let me see if we have someone from Hello, guys. Hello, everyone who is somewhere in the world. No matter where you are, you're going to learn something cool. So today, let me introduce Xavier. And I, I'm very, very happy he's here. I know that there are a few people around the world working. It's less than 0.1% people working on different things. And I wanted to... And I wanted to make sure that people understand that uh, Xavier has been, uh, Xavier, you know, working with this initiative of uh, systemic agility. And I wanted to know first where you are too. Right. So thank you very much, uh, Eric, for inviting me to this uh, dialogue, conversation, meaningful discussion, then in preparation to the uh, uh, the conference in, in November. So uh, really glad to uh, share some insights, some thoughts, some 
some outcomes from the work I've been doing since a while now. So um, I'm working and, and I've got, let's say, different role in life. So the first one is I'm a consultant working with my own company called Acceleration Lab. And I'm supporting organization in their transformation. Then the second role I'm teaching in the university in Lugano, south of Switzerland. So that's the Italian part of Switzerland. Um, and I'm responsible for the module called organization leadership in the master in business administration with a major in innovation management. And it's uh, really interesting. I'm, I'm supporting helping students to understand how to adapt organization to the, the postmodern uh, paradigm, so to say. And uh, uh, because they are really focused in the um, management of innovation, is the nature of the master they are doing. Um, for me, the point is helping them to understand innovation may also be uh, organizational innovation, and, and maybe we should put the man in front of the, of the machine uh, if, if, let's say, we want to uh, thrive in those difficult times. And um, my last uh let's say activity um uh, that at least interesting for this evening and for this discussion is, is researcher so i'm researching uh within my own company acceleration lab i'm also coaching students in their working in their their research project and following them in the master thesis and i'm also working together with the business agility institute uh in uh, researching around um topic uh, such as uh uh, systemic agility or business agility, and, and looking much more to uh, then the development of a culture and how then the culture interact together with the strategy and looking at, um, let's say, the, the kind of matrix product where we've got on one side the strategy and the other side we've got the culture and the outcome is, let's say, the global performance that is obviously mitigated and moder moderated if we want to use some sophisticated statistic term uh, by a number of factors. And that's where, where I'm, 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 let's say, uh, in and, 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 and working. Well, this is very interesting. And we, we, Marwin, you are back. Where are you? Then I come back to Xavier. It's just, you know, we take advantage of this post-COVID where people all around the world meet again, even virtually, right? Where, where are you located, Marwin? I'm located in the beautiful city of Düsseldorf in Germany. Wow, that's great. So uh, I think we're going to have a great question from different cultures today, Xavier, and I hope you enjoy it. So when we are talking about teaching, um, one of the questions it comes to my mind is what is different about your work and, and classic agility? So, because it's somehow classic, I know it focused more into it was created by a bunch of guys that unfortunately we did not have much diversity there from one or two countries. And then the company now are completely different to what it was in 2002. We have a high number of disruptions, we have diversity, neurodiversity, we have so many different things in companies. So, what's the difference? If you are trying to explain someone in two phrases, um, what's different about your approach? Why should I? hear this uh, spend my time instead of with my family. Wow, two phrases. That's a challenge, Eric, but I will try then to, uh, to answer properly. So what is, what is let's say, different is, um, I'm sorry, I can't answer in two phrases, but I try to be short and crisp. Um, yeah. yes. The adaptation of the organization uh, is, is uh, a critical topic and um, we may consider that organization are in transition between the modern and postmodern perspective or paradigm um, and and the model i've been developing the systemic agility model is is helping positioning really where the organization are in that very continuum and and the point is if, if we want to transform and if we want to help the organization thrive in this context uh, we need to start from where really the organization is and I think what is maybe unique in my approach is uh, starting with some precise measure uh, where I'm looking uh, to position in very different domain where the organization is in, in between, let's say, those two extreme in this continuum and to really start a transformation from there. And that's a systemic approach. ID is not just working on a single method of we need to implement Scrum or we need to uh, implement SAFE or we need to 
um, or, or, or just going from kind of recipe, I've got a headache, so I need them to take an aspirin, this will be okay. So, but really looking to all the factors that are contributing uh, then to the balance in the organization, the reduction of stress, and helping them to keep the context in check. And therefore, I didn't want to be dogmatic with this very model. I, I, I wanted to have a model that really helped keeping the context in check. And we may imagine that the ASM organization doesn't need agility because their context is pretty stable and they can keep this five years planning, budgeting as some countries or some, some, some uh, organizations were doing in the past and, and, and still okay for them because of their positioning. We're thinking to Rolex, for example, I'm not sure that they need to be agile, but uh, looking to the, the, the context they are in. And some other organizations, they really need them to adapt. And, and missing adaptation creates tension, creates stress, creates um, destroy welfare in the organization, and therefore destroy the global government. So I wanted to check where the organization is, is in continuum without being dogmatic and trying to help the organization discover where it needs to act to create a balance, to create a systemic approach. And systemic is really key because if um, let we consider system dynamics, for example, and the different pattern. I don't know if you're familiar with the addiction pattern. So what organizations are doing, there's some quick fix, and the quick fix are putting them away from the fundamental solution. And by implementing the quick fix, they think they are resilient. And the more they think they are resilient, the less they want to go for a fundamental solution. So with this system, systemic approach, the idea is to collect all the key variables and explaining where the organization is maybe wrong if they want to thrive and they want to evolve um, in order then to provide with um, right elements and the elements and the input uh, that really match where the organization is. When you discuss with the CEO today, the CEO thinks is already agile. Transformation just is done. Next. Uh, but when you discuss with people, with staff, so they're far away from this transformation. So therefore, if we want to be effective in transformation, we don't have to start from where the CEO's thinking is, but from where the staff is really. And then we need to support the staff by progressive adjustments, uh, working on the system in order then to uh, bring back uh, then this organization in balance, reducing stress, and helping create in performance. So your challenge, two phrases. Uh, it's just two chapters of a book, maybe. Sorry. What you just said, Xavier, raises so many questions in my, in my head. Um, I, I'll try to start with the first, with the first one. <laughs> when you say, uh, start with where you are and uh, ba based on a uh, systemic approach, the, uh, an enterprise is a, a very complex system, and um, how do you spot where is the most burning aspect that needs to be improved in this uh, too complex system? And how do you? Uh, and given that we can't improve what we don't see, how can you make? How do you uh, make it visible to the other ones so they are convinced as well that this is the point to address before everything else? Right. And especially uh, think in a business as... environment, right? In a business environment, we have to demonstrate it. True, true. And and <clears throat> and, and that's so I mentioned then uh, into companies uh, willing for uh, um, let's say working in long eng engagement because transformations are coming overnight, but I'm usually I'm called for solving a problem. Um, and uh, therefore, I start with this very problem. So by measuring then first the systemic agility within the organization, so where is the burning issue? Uh, it depends on the size of the, the organization, but by, by making this assessment, so it's an assessment I'm asking then all employees to answer because change starts with answering the question. Answering questions, open doors, windows. Oh, I didn't think it was possible. Transformation start there, important. Then... I'm consolidating all those information uh, on company level, on business line level, on unit level. And what uh, we may observe at that very moment is uh, 
there are some units that are running well, some others that are not running so well, and therefore it helps to have a differentiated approach. And with this differentiated approach, if let's say they call me for a specific problem, um, we can then put all those elements on the table. So there is this problem, and there is then the current situation. So how can we reconcile all those stuff? It also helps uh, to avoid the uh, one-size-fits-all one approach. Uh, we've got a problem, so everybody needs three days of training of doing something, and then we'll fix the problem. No, that's just a declaration of intent that we know that three days of training won't work. So I actually would be happy giving three days of training, but uh, that's not a long-lasting solution. So therefore, ID is getting uh, then to the data, maybe also with some interview, in order then to qualify better uh, where the organization is, check in what's the symptom that's been revealed. So, and maybe the symptom is, uh, I've got a headache, but the headache is maybe coming because there is wrong digestion or wrong nutrition or, or whatsoever, and understanding where the root cause is, and then sharing this, sharing those elements and using data. So I love using data science and life science in order then to create and, and, and demonstrate where the problem is. And, and, and showing also with the relation in the data is, is uh, I, I'm using path analysis, structure equation modeling. I'm not asking clients to understand, but, but at, at least showing them that we may illustrate uh, the relationship between the data and, and, and what's then the, uh, what's the impact. And then um, searching, defining uh, with them uh, what can be um, possible, possible development. And for implementing the de development, I've been so building own methodology uh, that I'm using is uh, with uh, uh, the posture of a coach, uh, not telling people what to do, but really supporting, involving them um, in their own transformation. And this is key. The big advantage is I'm scalable, so I can work with rather large company because I'm trying to empower and, and, and involve people in the organization. Um, and uh, so... That's, that's, that's about the approach. So, of course, coming with a problem um, and then showing then the problem is just the symptoms, where are the causes and uh, what can we do and then start the, the transformation journey. So let me start. Uh, Long answer to again. Recapitulate. Yeah, but it is, I think it's yeah. very interesting because all of your answers open a, a different world of opportunity. About data, how many companies do not uh, use data in their favor? How many uh, companies do not use uh, artificial intelligence? And they, they need all these things on people. And the more the market accepts, the, the harder it is to, to, to listen to the signals from those markets. Now, I think it's interesting what you said is, um, you know, um, I'll try to pay attention to what's happening really in the company and assist. And trying to support this with data. Marwin, are you there? Because I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I think you can see me on the there. camera. Lost him. Um, and then one of the most important things here, um, I think, is when we are um, talking about uh, uh, trying to use data, and uh, one of the first things, uh, we, well, first thing we see is sometimes there is a disconnection between us as as an organizational change consultant and leadership. How we explain clearly to them why systemic you know thinking is and how we transfer this message to them and 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 then what what are the next steps imagine you go to a company uh you detect there is some kind of issue there and then you can tell us some story and then how you make this connection with leadership for them to understand it um i'm usually using then the results of my research and showing and putting on the table then the evidence so, for example, uh, it has been demonstrated for each point you gain in the systemic agility, you reduce then the tension by 0 0.9 um, with, uh, let's say, certain accuracy. So, and, and reducing tension is, is reducing or helping the global performance. And there is also a relation, one point in systemic agility and half point um, gain into uh, well-being reported by 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 employee um, i'm also uh, showing uh, that um, c level um, is always at least 20 percent more optimistic regarding agility uh, than the rest of the staff i'm also showing that the middleman 
uh, instrument is frozen middle uh, is the one that's less agile. And I'm explaining and having some narrative and some story to share with uh, the company saying, look, so you make a declaration of intent, you think it's working, you pretend that the middle management is still reaching than the objective in the past, implementing the transformation meantime and helping the, the, the organization to transform. So there is too much ambiguity for them. And they, they can't, so they need to be trained. <laughs> they are just enabled to, to implement the changes. So uh, and, and, and they're in really in bigger situation. And I think it explains as well than certain company where there was a crisis for people not willing to be the managers. Because it, 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 it may be terrible. So uh, putting all those evidence on the table, and if I've got already then, then the data from a company, it helps them to make some parallel. If I don't have data yet, uh, that's a discussion about courage. Because going through the assessment, it requires courage. So you know you are sick, you go to hospital, and you know that X-ray will reveal where the problems are. It, it, it requires courage. It's so easy to snap. Nah, I will go tomorrow to the hospital. It's okay for today. So, um, and, and, and this discussion on, on, on courage may also take time. That's not a first discussion, second discussion. And, 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 and also willing to do this and going to a company, just one kind of quick fix. Uh, I remember an assignment in Italy. Uh, I was asked, uh, we want to become um, lean and agile. So six months from now, uh, uh, please do. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> uh, it's hard. So we speak about uh, transformation that, that takes five, six, seven, ten years. Uh, transforming then the culture and the organization. So just looking to the, the Swiss uh, rail station, um, they wanted to uh, increase then the customer experience. They had a problem with the guys controlling the ticket. It took 10 years for uh, bringing them um, the user exper experience to the level they wanted to. Uh, 10 years. So it takes time. And, 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 and therefore, um, I don't have then the, the magic stick for implementing. <laughs> or that. Yeah, that would, I, think, I, think, I think that would be us. So uh, I think it's hard, especially when, you know, uh, the time we leave many things are happening at the time, at the same time, uh, people have their own interests, company politics, they, they have uh, hidden agendas, um, there are so many things happening. I think it's, sometimes it's, it's difficult to, to see in which direction to go. So, um, so th let's go, Marwin. Marwin, I think you, you, you have some questions. Let me see if I can hear you. Yeah, I have a, I have a couple, but let's, start, let's go back to the basics. Can you hear uh, Marvin on your side? No, no, not at the moment. No, okay. I think we lost this. Well, um, let's go for uh, Isam. While we're, waiting, yeah. Yeah. while we're waiting for uh, Marwan, I wanted to ask, um, you talked earlier about the CEO thinking that what's happening inside the company is uh, different than the reality. And most of the time, from my perspective, this comes from the distance between where the work is happening and the higher ups and uh, of the company. And the more the distance grows, the more um, illusion we have about the, the concrete reality. Um, how do you integrate this variable in your model to uh, try to reduce this distance or influence the impact of this distance? Because sometimes you make uh, you make assumptions about what what's happening outside of your uh, of your angle and outside of your uh, daily work or daily context. You make assumptions. You work based on those assumptions, and this influence or biases the way you are making decisions and the way you implement the work based on something that is com completely uh, uh, based on n absolute no facts. Um, how do you include it in your yeah. model? So um, to get the data and um, to prove this with facts to uh, all the parties, I'm just getting, let's say, the level of the respondent and having some um, demographic data in order to make them the aggregation presentation. Of, and then if there is 20% difference between the staff and CEO, this is just visible on the chart that we look uh, and we compare them the bucket of respondents based on their role in the company. Uh, I just put them the fish on the table. Hey guys, that's your answer. 
So there is a difference. Um, and um, true meaning conversation. So it may be that, uh, and I've already heard this, the CEO saying, no, that's not the assessment of my company. You assess under the company, should be a mistake. Uh, okay, fine. They double check this with this person, then, then uh, the data. And, and if there is no space for discussion, you know, I'm just using post posture. So um, all people agreed and to uh, um, be, uh, let's say, authentic and, and wanted to be part of, of building solution altogether. As it, it doesn't work. Uh, I, I, at the beginning of doing this job, I was thinking that I was able to, to breathe for others. Uh, I realized I'm the table. So uh, in that case, I got to say sorry. So things that you were mentioning in, in, in let me read this <clears throat> of your talk in the conference, which is yep. going to be systemic agility approach to uh, measure and steer compass adaptation to the postmodern era. What is postmodern era for you? Give me a some the first we can understand what we are talking about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I, I've been using the work of uh, um, different and author in order to qualify the modern and, and, and postmodern. But the major one is the one from Mary Jo Hatch, who defined an organizational theory from modern, symbolic, and uh, uh, postmodern perspective. So we may associate the modern perspective with the industrial perspective, where all the paradigm, all the method that were let's say, useful to organize the work uh, in the uh, industrial way we're, 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 we're working, while in in the postmodern, we are um, much more uh, um, troubled um, by the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, the ambiguity, um, but also the representation um, are um, more kind of simulacra. If, if, if we go back, for example, to the work of Jacques Derrida, who has been also really influencing me in, in let's say, exploring the, the, the post-era, um, when he defined in the simulacra, so today, um, if we've got a group of person um, who define a new concept, that is not grounded, but they just believe in that concept, this concept became reality for them, and it's simulacra. So we may have in front of us different kind of simulacra, and we can do business with simulacra, and, and, and therefore this part of the game. And so that's not something that we may ignore, and thinking it doesn't exist. No, it exists and it's a reality for people. Um, and, and, and therefore, we need to take this into consideration. Um, another characteristic- oh, Hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, let, me, let okay. me stop you there for a second. Uh, can you give yeah. me three exact, uh, so imagine that someone wants to know where they are, how they know if they are one or another. So, so, so very thing, things they can measure. So, so, so to position you know. themselves in, in modern or postmodern, you mean? Or? Yes, exactly. How, how, how you measure it? How you know it's one or the other according to yes? Yeah. Um, so I'm not asking questions regarding the way people think, but I'm asking questions regarding the way people live in their culture and they perceive their own culture. And so I'm using the culture to reflect as this reflective model. And so that's what's happening in the environment that reflects if they are more in an extreme or in the other. Considering then the various dimension and the way they create sense, for example, the way they manage things, the way they communicate, the way they organize, the methods they are using in the behavior. Sure. So, Isam, all yours. Let's go for that. What I wanted to ask is, okay, th this helps uh, create awareness about the situation we're in and uh, acknowledge it, right? And and after uh, awareness comes the uh, the action or the uh, the change. H how do you put them in a? Of course, it takes time. But how do you put them in a positive energy and positive posture to change their outcome, uh, even if the uh, destination is too far away and not lose uh, enthusiasm, not lose energy, and not lose the momentum? How do you create this momentum right. and not losing it? 
Right. Uh, well, the destination, so what the important is the journey, not the destination. And, and therefore, creating the momentum, we can't uh, do too many things at the same time. And I'm considering then the component in the organization in, in, let's say, four blocks. I'm considering the objectives and the means from a cultural standpoint and from an operative standpoint. So we've got some operative objective that the KPI, the objective. I'm considering then the vision, the value, that's, uh, let's say, the uh, cultural uh, objective. I'm considering uh, the operative mean, maybe then the strategy and the tool and the method. And I'm considering then the operative culture, uh, that's the behavior. Uh, and therefore, uh, in the middle, we've got the context. And I choose with the client uh, meaningful elements, small one, from each quadrant that are connected. And so for reaching this element into the vision, what should I change? Or what's the key PI I should adopt in order then to measure them? What's then the strategy? What's the tool I need to? And what's the behavior I need to change? And, and with the systemic approach, so I'm just getting an infinite loop in running in all those quadrants and, and having an iterative approach and, and, and searching for the, each iteration, like three months, uh, and then measuring and with this PDCA approach and checking that we reached and so objective or what can we do more uh, in, in order to start um, the, the journey and, and for being positive, leveraging on the force because in company, you will see that there are some issues to be solved but they've got also some strengths and, and so leverage on the strength or also because there is rather good differentiation between the different units so maybe if there is a problem in one unit and there is no problem in another unit, so that's having those two units working together. Say, so what those guys are doing that you are not doing? Uh, how, how come? Because, and, 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 and just getting the people around the table, um, creating um, then the right atmosphere for making things changes. Because if we've got on one side the accountants and on the other side the marketing, maybe we may have some problem because they will say we belong to, to a different world. And so it's not so easy to reconcile us. But yeah, so that's working and, and, and not in dissociation, but in association with those elements. So taking into consideration the value, taking into consideration the behavior, the strategy in the tool and KPI, and then having a small chunk of this connected and ensuring that uh, we can um, progressively uh, help them the, the company to, to move on. And one of the important aspects of the uh, infinite loop you talked about is maintaining the balance. Have you ever experienced in some uh, previous uh, experimentations uh, to stretch to stretch out one side of the loop or uh, what kind of impact does it uh, does it have? Uh, or investing too much in one area compared to the others. Yeah, uh, I've got the limiting belief. If I'm doing this, uh, the change won't work because I strongly believe that we need to work on, on for, but obviously I can be hijacked in one uh, because maybe there, in the, there is then this question saying, oh, we just want to review our value and just by declaring the value and putting them on the world in the corridor in the company, things will change. So, and, and so therefore, the, just making some marketing, some greenwashing around the value. And, 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 and there are things that uh, is, let's say, maybe around, well, not frustrating because. Okay. No, no, sorry. It, we lost you for a second and we are back. Yes, oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, by, by putting in the value of the company on the wall, it's, well, it's not frustrating, but it's a missed opportunity for because if, if we put this, so what do we need to get there? Uh, that's, that's uh, yeah, or, or just implementing new KPI, or uh, just implementing partially, or, or having the wrong strategy, and and willing to add some some more control, for example, in the uh, operational means, while it's maybe not adding control because it's anti agile it's just, uh, So everybody is responsible for own 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 activity and 
adding another person um, to control then the job of the first one is, is, is obviously not helping. If you remove the ownership uh, of a person, um, mm. I mean, the more person. to lose. So, yeah. so uh, we're having owners coming and going today with the, with the connection. Let's see if we can get them. He had a couple of interesting questions for you. One of the things we have been guys talking for uh, probably last half an hour is very high level for for companies. So how we implement it? Because you know I'm a change consultant. I understand what you are talking. I I think it's actionable. But then none of these can be communicated to managers or leaders because they are not understand it. Uh, how we do it? And give me some tangible things that can be done in companies so they really understand what we are talking about. And they are, they don't know about systemic things. They don't know about um different tools of things so how we talk to them let's try to talk to them and sure. explain and, and 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 talk about uh, very actionable things sure so um let's take an example um if in in all the domain communication uh, management of information is important and so um an element that can um, emerge from the assessment is uh, uh all the employee everybody in the company uh, says now we are not well informed uh, discussing with those guys they receive more than 200 emails a day and they spent their full day into meeting so those guys say we are not well informed and they keep their day long communicating Ooh, there is a problem no so uh then what can we do on, on communication i think uh email uh, is a tool for communicating from the year 2000, we're now in, in 2022, and, and uh, everybody's using in companies, a lot of people are using email, such as WhatsApp. Um, it, and, and so reviewing then the tooling for communicating um, may help and, and defining some KPI, reducing the time spent in meeting by 50%, uh, reducing the email traffic by 50%, by adopting a new tool, uh, such as Slack, for example, for sharing um, in, in information, helping people uh, changing their behavior uh, because they want to copy half of the company when they send an email. How come? So they want to be protected. So what can we change there in order to create a safer environment? Um, and and in, in the value, uh, searching for uh, promoting then transparent communication. Because back on this communication aspect, uh, there is also, if you ask managers, are you transparent with your employees? They say, yes, 100%. When you ask the employees, are the managers transparent? They say, yeah, 60%. So, so from where the difference is coming from? The difference is coming from usually because managers are saying everything they know, but they don't say what they don't know. And employees are considering everything that should be known. So that include the things that they don't know. So therefore, helping also the tangible way, the managers, to speak about what they know, but also speaking about what they don't know. Because if a manager is not speaking about what he don't know, uh, then it becomes conspiracy theory in, in, by the employees. Oh, he's not telling us about this, so this means there should be a plan. Oh, and, and so therefore, and, and, and these are some really tangible arguments uh, that are, I think, valid for a large number of companies um, working time lost due to communication um, issue, wrong communication, wrong communication methods, and where we can have a systematic approach, systemic approach as well, um, that, that just optimize, optimize the time. And, 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 and by the way, I did also some study checking what's the impact of interrupt on productivity. Uh, interrupt can kill productivity to down to zero um, in, in simulation, I did depending on the type of task. So just reducing the number of email, helping people working differently, helping them to, I do check your mail twice a day, uh, one time in the morning and one time in the afternoon. And you tell people if, if there is something urgent, uh, please call. Um, and, 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 but that's not enough uh, in, in telling this to people uh, because they've got a number of blockage. And then, ah, but the spy boss, I need to answer. And then, ah, but the client. So, oh, but this guy, I always, he always said that I'm answering immediately. So, I need to, to keep my, my batch of guys with answering immediately. So, 
therefore those guys need to be helped um, in order to, 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 to support this change. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think, I, I, think, think we, I think we have Marwin <laughs> here. So go right. ahead before your connection fluctuates. Yeah, go for it. Let's, uh, let's test the uh, audio. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah. You disappear. So, I'd like to, to get this, take this back a notch a little bit. Just uh, when I first read Systemic Agile, I thought this got stolen from, from my publications with ASAM because that's the, that's the name of our framework. It's called Systemic Agile, Systemic Enterprise Agile. But so I'd like to, it's, it, it is true, but uh, the fact that I was thinking it was uh, stolen is a joke. Um, my question is to take back this a notch for our audience. Could you explain what you mean? What is for you the definition of systemic agile? So it's yeah, so, called so systemic I try, agility. I try, I try to focus, uh, yeah, we try to focus first on the on the on how to measure it, but I think this is a very good question because many people may be asking this. Right. So that's the ability to use all the levers in a systemic way to keep the context in check. And I know that, that interesting question here. You have been holding yourself for a few minutes while the connection was fluctuating. So go ahead. And the way we jump into it. Marwin. All yours is, I think, focus making some notes. Something I appreciate about he makes no, notes listen. and he he's brilliantly summarized the the conversation after, and it, it provides a lot of value. I, well, we love to remain. So it's all yours. So yeah. you can go for that, and I think it's, it's your perspective is going to be important too. Uh uh Going back to when you talked about uh, intro, uh your answer about introducing new tools, for instance, uh, uh, re removing emails or reducing by half the uh, amount of email exchanges and stuff. Um, it's, most of the time, it's not a problem with the tool. It's more about behaviors. Um, and it's not only about putting or serving a tool to, to people. It's uh, more than the cost of uh, change for, uh, for implementing the tool or using the tool. There's also the, the change in behavior. Do, I know that uh, inside the uh, Enterprise Agility University, we have uh, our uh, own techniques to change uh, people's behavior and uh, adapting it. But do you, uh, can you uh, talk to our uh, participants and to our audience uh, if you have different tools or different techniques to help people yeah. change their behavior? Yeah, so that's back in those four quadrants. So for helping changing the behavior, we say we want to reduce email traffic by 50% and time spent in meeting by 50%. So uh, we can define some KPIs. Uh, and the KPIs, so the time spent by the overall company um, in uh, meeting and uh, also the time, uh, the, the number of email exchanged by uh, uh, all the people uh, on a daily basis, for example. We make a snapshot today and so we want in six months from now, nine, nine months from now, that it could be at 50 percent. So that defining then the goal and, and helping. So that's the goal we all want to, and there is something that we measure in tangible way. Not declaring that we want to, but we are not measuring and we are enabled then to share the results. So that's first step. Uh, the second is, of course, then proper implementation of the, the instruments. And then for helping reducing um, also then the time spending meeting, um, we can um, implement or develop some add-on uh, in Outlook. So when I'm organizing then the meeting, uh, I may have then the cost of the meeting for, for the company. Uh, each person I'm adding is multiplied by the time and with uh, <laughs> and, uh, a, a cost per hour and then meeting two hours with 10 people, you understand the price. Uh, it may help them taking your responsibility, am I willing to burn this budget? Uh, and by the way, it's funny, if you see that so everybody can organize this kind of meeting, but if there is just an, 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 an order to be signed for uh, maybe 1,000, 2,000 euro, then you need to have five signature on that uh, very order. Anyway, so it's between bracket. Um, so then on the behavior, and that's maybe the most uh, critical point, check in. Uh, how come in, 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 in the culture, so people are using the email in a very way, 
and then helping them with support in order then to let go from the old way of working and embrace a new way and, 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 and creating safe space for uh, learning. Uh, maybe in the vision and in the uh, cultural objective and in, in the value, um, defining some elements that may be meaningful and, and, and support it, supporting them, them, uh, this. The, the, the key point is declaring things, being consistent, measuring things, uh, not being complacent, uh, but being tolerant uh, and, and, and going for this culture. I think changing culture requires 100% tolerance and 0% complacency. So, Xavier, I wanted to ask you something that might uh, want to know. What's the relationship of your frameworks and your ideas with any existing framework in the market, any existing company or any existing open framework? What's the connection? Are you working with helping someone in the world? Are you working with some things we don't know and we want to know? Tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah, um, I've been really inspired by um, different authors um, and, 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 and researcher. So McGregor with the theory X and Epsilon uh, is one of them. Um, then uh, there is the concept of spiral dynamics developed by Graves. Um, I've been really fascinated by this model and um, wanted um, to uh, help organization um, to move forward in a kind of structured way. And in, let's say, the questionnaire, you may see that industrial is, if you are familiar with uh, the model of spheral dynamics, um, is, is, let's say, plenty of uh, blue and orange. And uh, uh, the um, postmodern, uh, um, let's say, boundary is, uh, let's say, rather... Um, yellow to turquoise, um, and, and, and so, um, therefore, that's, that's maybe the, what's most present in, in, in the background uh, of the model. And I've been trying, getting into the literature uh, and consolidating a um, number of, of authors to, to get the various domain and, and to build then uh, this uh, systemic approach by identifying six domains that are the sense of purpose. How does the organization turn all the noses in the same direction? Uh, second is the management. I don't want to speak about leadership because I think leadership, that we can then open up the chapter, um, giving them the responsibility to one for breathing for the other. So that's removing them the responsibility for the team to breathe. And, and so therefore, I prefer speaking about management. Um, um, the third domain is organization, how then the organization is, is structured and is supporting uh, this. So we have got bureaucracy uh, on one side and on, on the other side, we've got uh, organic organization. Um, we've got information, we discussed about this. So information is power in, in the modern world. In the postmodern, information is just the enabler for experimenting. We want to experiment, we live in a complex world. There are things that we don't know, we don't know that we don't know those things. So therefore, all the information is really supporting us, avoiding this some issue. Um, next domain is the method. Uh, the method in the industrial or uh, modern world is um, for reducing the cost, uh, potentially uh, getting a better quality. Uh, while in postmodern, we in learning organization, things are changing on day by day basis and that we need to learn and adapt on a continuous manner. And the last is behavior. So the modern behavior is centered on one side. Everybody's working for his own agenda. People are working with MBO, or I'm just working for me and for my boss. I don't care about the others. While in the postmodern, behaviors are centered uh, on the system. Uh, so how can I be an agent creating collective intelligence? Uh, and therefore, we develop then the intersubjectivity. I need to work on myself. I need to work on the I in order than to contribute positively to be and be a subject and an object um, continuously. So I'm subject, I'm directing with my knowledge, but I'm an object because I want to be useful for the others. I want what I'm doing is, is, is useful and can be. So I wonder that what I'm explaining now is not useful for me because what I'm telling is already in my head, but it's useful for 
for the ones who are listening to me. And but but, but useful not directing them, but, but being really at service. Um, and, and, and so that's the last part uh, of the, the, the behavior. And there, there are different authors. Um, maybe I've been, let's say, influenced by the work done by Jérôme Baron, a um, guy working um, in, in, in France who developed a new model um, around uh, behavioral agility. Um, and, and he may be uh, the one who sent me the first uh, seed for willing to expand from behavior and integrating much more cultural aspects. So um, that's uh, about the, the, major, um, the major influence. And then on the methods that all the, the work I've been doing and all my study, in, let's say the coaching, coaching world uh, that helped me in, in, in developing then the approach. When, uh, yeah. Um... We talked about culture, methods, processes, tools, etc., behaviors. Um, during chaotic times or uh, uh, disruptive times, uh, the pressure tends to push people to switch into I before everything else. Whereas in order to survive, they need uh, rather to be in a position where they think company before the entity, before the team, before the I. That's how they collectively survive. Um, do you have some kind of uh, a cheat sheet that we can find somewhere, uh, how we can use your model in order to prevent uh, being in the, uh, the bad po position or the best sense and move rather towards the better uh, sense that have better chances for everyone to survive? <laughs> Tough question, Isam. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I had the chance um, to work um, at, at, at for the first, second wave of the COVID, um, analyzing the, the reaction of uh, companies uh, to the first wave of COVID um, and comparing with their systemic agility and their, their reaction. And check if, let's say, the companies that trade higher systemic agility had better reaction. And a uh, big surprise, because this was the one with the lower systemic agility that react better. Uh, why? Because the one that trade better on systemic agility were uh, just a bit better than the other, but they were not, let's say, systemic agile. They were anyway some tension. And there were maybe some more freedom, but people, they didn't know how to use them the freedom. And you mentioned it in case of chaos. Uh, you can't use the freedom. If, if you are just unable to use this freedom, everybody will go in, in, in and first the eye as, as, as you mentioned. So therefore, for facing, at least with this study, what emerged is it, it looked like that company who are less systemically agile um, react better because things were centralized and it was easier than to give uh, direction. But it was just a reaction. Now, Looking forward, there were anyway some interesting elements uh, popping up um, and, and, and showing that uh, the one were a bit more agile had then more difficulties at the beginning, but had then the ability to uh, uh, better adapt. But overall, with the data I've been gathering, um, it was an advantage for um, companies uh, more uh, uh, less less. Uh, systemically um, agile. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have observation of very, very, very uh, systemic agile organization to do things, things would be different. So. Thank you, Xavier, and thank you for all the time today. Today we have a, a unique podcast where um, you know, sometimes it happens, and we were talking about um, connections, and we lost today. Marwin, he had so many good questions today. We have a, a couple of technical problems with the, the text at the bottom, just doing some crazy things. The, this is what happened in a real world. Anything can happen, and uh, when anything can happen, I think that uh, yourself, leading your emotions, trying to make sure that uh, you're still leading people, obviously, in a company, when, you know, Everything can be unexpected. Everything is interconnected. And um, I think that 
from this conversation, it's also important to understand that first, data is very important. Second, you need to find new opportunities. You need to be open to these uh, new opportunities. Opportunities, people talk about systemic things, but opportunities are also systemic. You do not find in a one dimensional plane where, you know, where you just look after one, one dimension or two, you don't find opportunities. Opportunity is something that it requires seeing the world in a systemic way and also risk obviously everyone talk about systemic risk but then i think opportunities are in the in the same way so i appreciate your time today i'm very happy you are Xavier. i hope the audience also find it very interesting guys no more i think um one of the beauty of uh, the challenge we had this year has been to to have um translation in now we have 35 languages not 34 as last week that we're gonna have okay. translation so Everyone is going to be able to uh, listen to the message, to learn more and during the conference. Uh, some, you know, we try to be inclusive in the price, everything. We try to be inclusive and try to make sure that all these ideas can communicate to the whole world, which is a very important part, right? So I'm happy you are here today. Thank you, Xavier, for joining today. Thank you, Sam. Marwin, thank you also for joining guys i will see you in a few days now remember if you have any question you can also contact xavier online you can add him in linkedin i will be happy with questions and i will see you in a few days Get, guys do so i want to have a tiny conversation with you before you leave uh now we finish the show but i'm gonna sit here and i'll see you in a few days guys have a good day wherever you are in the world thank you everyone The world is more complex than ever before, moving and changing at an incredible rate. No one is immune, not even the most successful leaders of today's best-known companies. We are taking the global industry to new assumptions, beyond agile and business agility. Be ready to understand the science behind high uncertainty and accelerated change. Be ready to challenge your organization. Join us at the Enterprise Agility World Conference to know more. The largest event on science, organizational change, and enterprise agility. Enterprise Agility World Conference. The place where science meets organizational change.